I just bought 22 bins and boxes of video games from fellow YouTuber RGT85, and today you guys get to see what's in every single one. I basically have three goals for this video. Number one, is to give you guys an inside look at my resale business as we sort through every single one of these games and decide which ones go to Amazon and which go to whatnot. Number two is to test Spanky's reseller knowledge with some increasingly difficult reseller quizzes. And number three is going to be to find a few items in this lot, probably in this bin down here, to put on my Switch trade shelf to hopefully trade for a Switch Grail at the convention I'm going to this weekend. My game plan for how to do that is basically to go two tables at a time. We've We've got the workbench back here and an extra table over here. We're gonna sort everything from every bin out flat onto each table so that we can kind of easily designate what is gonna go where. All right, Spanky, we're gonna do a cool YouTube transition. Ready? Snap, yeah. snap your fingers. Oh, seamless. Very nice stacks here. Looks like we have an assortment of uh, NES to uh, N64 games here. Spanky, your first challenge of the day. Are you ready? This one is for a sticker. Oh. <laughs> No, you can't see it. Point to a game that is worth more than 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Yep. Easy. Donkey Kong Country, unfortunately. <laughs> this one's worth about 20. So sorry, you uh, don't get... I know you're going to be crushed. You don't uh, get this sticker. So, so happy. It's also pretty the, disturbing. That was, that was one of my favorite parts of this lot. We got not one, but like four cursed Mario and Yoshi stickers. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and actually throw these into the whatnot pile. We're going to give these as freebies with our with our next auction just randomly. So somebody, hopefully a small child doesn't get one of these. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Look at this, folks. We've got a, a stray Elsie up here ah, ah. looking in on us. But yeah, this was honestly a super solid. Oh, no. No, <laughs> just when I was going to say what a nice bin it is, we have a uh, reproduction cart here, a pretty bad one at that. Looks like we do have two complete games. Why is it? I find so many complete killer instincts. I don't know why. We've got Mickey Mania. Basically what's going to happen with these is like the super common stuff, the Pokemon Stadium, by the way, love to see the uh, top labels there. The Pokemons and the, I don't know, the Tony Hawks and stuff like that. That's going to go off to Amazon. The uncommon stuff or the low dollar stuff, the low dollar stuff will get bought bundled up and sold on whatnot. The uncommon stuff that is like mid to high dollar will get sold like individually. So for example, we may have a lot that is Rush 20. Actually, is, is, is this worth anything? I can't remember ever selling that one before. That maybe it's Rush and Asteroids and Rainbow Six and Arrow Fighters Assault all in one lot because I don't really want to waste my time selling games that are worth under like 15 bucks or so a piece individually, especially on a platform where it takes a little bit more work. Over here on my side, we have the most random smattering of video game paraphernalia I've ever seen. First of all, we're gonna have to put this one aside. This is a Super Nintendo controller for the SNES Classic. So we're gonna, I assume we'll probably find a console without its controller a little bit later. So we want to save that. A brand new gold Mario Amiibo along with a couple random loose Amiibos. This one I know is worth like 50 bucks. We've got GameCube games, Japanese GameCube, Japanese Dreamcast, 3DS, some bad Genesis games. We've got a couple of Switch items. Multiple Dreamcast games over here including one sealed one, Coaster Work which you guys may be like, oh my gosh, Seal Dreamcast, that one is so expensive. But no, it's uh, it's like a $9 game, even Seal. We've got a Sega light gun here, but believe it or not, the rarest item on this table, I'm pretty sure, is this right here, the Panasonic Q. If you guys watched, why are you snickering? Looks like a toaster. <laughs> it does. The GameCube toaster, folks. Uh, if you guys watched the actual pickup video, I was very surprised to find this in the collection. I had no idea. This was Panasonic's dual GameCube game and DVD player. I wish you guys could see Spanky's face right now. He's never heard of such a thing. And then also we've got like, what is this? Roblox figures? I don't even know. We've got, oh no, I thought it was Breath of the Wild, unfortunately. That looks like Skyward Sword. Ooh, and some uh, little Mario promo magnets there for it looks like uh, 3D All-Stars. How nice. Now folks, as I'm looking at this table, I'm realizing that almost all of this stuff honestly is probably whatnot. I don't think there's a lot that we can really sell on Amazon. Donkey Kong, that was from the other table. We'll sell the Amiibos on Amazon. We're starting, we're getting a little bit organized here. We've got appropriately labeled bins, some RGT stuff over there as well that we're gonna be dropping stuff in. But most of the stuff on this table, like this might be it that we send to Amazon and maybe like this Switch game. If I sent this to Amazon, 
I would instantly get my account deactivated and lose my livelihood. But most of this stuff is like weird or obscure enough. It's going to be the perfect stuff for a whatnot auction. This one I'm honestly not sure of. I may actually look this one up live. This is the Xbox 360 HD DVD player. I want to say, didn't PS3s play DVDs without any like external unit or something like that? Microsoft must have been sleeping this generation. Okay, yeah, so this is saying 25 bucks after fees, but the sales rank is super high, which means it sells extremely slow on Amazon. This is the Amazon seller app, by the way. And especially since this also is in like complete and really nice boxed condition, it's the kind of collector item that would probably do better on whatnot anyway. Ooh, this is one specific item that I definitely wanted to highlight. Haunted Halloween. This is a bootleg NES game. The reason is it's bright pumpkin orange. Look at that. I've never seen an NES game this color before. I have no idea if the game is any good, but if I had to guess, I would say Amazon probably doesn't have a listing for this bad boy. And look at this, folks. Look at what Spanky just spotted. I should have made this a quiz. Another repro cart. Granted, this one is a little bit more obvious, but you can kind of tell. Basically, a chimp could have spotted this. <laughs> could have spotted this repro. Uh, it's really blurry and fuzzy, and also there's no back label to speak of. Did they actually make... Was Dracula X a Super Nintendo game? You guys, you have to help this fake gamer out. I don't know these things. Come on, he's salty, folks. I also thought I'd give you guys a little secret peek at the rest of the chaos happening in the basement office over here with the poor lighting we've got over here. All this stuff which we had already had ready to go for Amazon, but that's kind of put on pause right now. We've got stuff below here that I don't even really know. Is that a PS5? I don't know what this stuff is. Um, we've got boxes of stuff here that are ready to go out to Amazon as soon as we can get to UPS. And the reason I came over here is I also need to pull out our whatnot freebie bin, which is looking a little bit, a little bit thick right now because basically what we do when we have like ten dollar or less items is we'll just throw it in the freebie bin and throw it in when somebody buys multiple items in a single stream so like this fig pin is a perfect example i guess i should technically look it up and folks look what i just found in our freebie bin by the way this was not planned look at this this is how i knew about the sealed coaster works we've got one two three four five six and then for some reason apparently rgt85 had one as well by the way if you guys are curious what we do with our repro we either will throw them in as freebies or sometimes just throw them away because it's not legal to sell them on any platform that we sell on. By the way, this is the one box that Sean, RGT85, gave me that I was just like, oh, do I really want to take that one? I'm not sure. <laughs> because it's literally all completely worthless. But well, I don't know. WCW Nitro is not bad. Um, oh, okay. NHL Hits 02 is not bad. Okay, I stand corrected a little bit. Most of the games in here are worthless sports titles that hold almost no value. This might be the kind, like, maybe we'll sell this whole box. There are, like, some complete Genesis games in there. We may sell this whole box just, like, as one lot, but we'll see. Not normally the kind of inventory that I really favor. All right, Spanky, I have the perfect next bin for you right here. Next challenge for a dollar wow. if you can find the most valuable game in this bin. Double your daily salary. <laughs> and folks, while he's puzzling over that, I've got this big boy that has caught my eye mm, that we're gonna very gently, very gently. Seamless. It's like a, just like a little, like a little, no, like a little shoebox of candy here, folks. Reset reseller candy that makes my bank account feel good. Okay, this is not working. I think we're gonna go for a little three, two, easy. Folks, I can hear the hater Hanks in the comments warming up their little finger knuckles already. This Phoenix resale drops his games all the time just, just doing bits. He doesn't care at all about his collection. He doesn't care at all about games. He's just a fake gamer. And to that I say, you know what, Hank? You're right. Honestly, I should have more respect for these games. I really just wish that games came in some sort of like a protective, maybe plastic casing that would ensure that the game itself doesn't get damaged even if, you know, minor drops and scuffles happen. Hey, wait a sec. Now folks, looking at this little table of goodies here, it's honestly a lot more of the kind of stuff that I really like to see. I mean, Mario 1 and 2 are classic. We've got a lot of, looks like complete GameCube titles here, which should hold some, yeah, Hit and Run is great value. Batman, not so much. Resident Evil's always good. Melee, love to see it. And this is the first print too. Not that that really makes much of a difference for price on Amazon. 
on. We've got, <laughs> whoops, looks like this is backwards. We've got the NES control deck in honestly really nice shape. This will be a great item that we'll throw into our next whatnot auction, as well as the Rap Master Rocket from Toe Jam and Earl. Kickstarter limited run, I've never heard of this. That's the fun thing about going through large collections is you find a lot of stuff usually that you've never heard of. Here we've got a couple replacement cases and with the games inside for Zelda, Legend of Zelda and Advent. Oh, that's a little bit of a surprise there. Switched at birth. Got collector's edition of Xenoblade Chronicles. I've got I've got a great Hater Hank story to share with you guys a little bit later. And then just a whole bunch of like, especially the more popular like Wii U and Wii games can do pretty well. Like there's nothing that I'm seeing that's super high dollar here. Wii Sports Resort will always do well for us. Uh, Muramasa Demon Blade. I want to say last I checked, this was 40 plus dollars if I'm not mistaken. This is one that I don't see a whole lot. The core gang outvasion from inner earth honestly not sure about that again same benchmark with these Ooh, we got tatsunoko versus capcom is another good one to find solid wii titles here if the sales rank on amazon is under like 60 or so thousand we'll throw it on there if not if it's high dollar we'll sell it individually whatnot if it's a low dollar they get bundled up to save time because ultimately that is the resource that i think a lot of resellers don't take seriously enough pretty much everyone will consider okay how much profit will i make after fees and shipping per item not not enough people factor in how much time am I going to have to spend per item when thinking about bulk deals like these. All right, and Spanky, for a dollar, what is the most expensive game on this table? Okay, wait, wait what, what is the deal with this? I've on, I don't know if I've ever seen that. I don't know if I want to, well, honestly, I can't give it away because I literally don't know how much that is worth, but what are you thinking? Um, well, yeah, I had no idea what to do with this. It's between these two for me. This one's a weird, uh, weird enough game, and this one's Resident Evil. Uh, ultimately, I think I'm gonna go with the makers of uh, Mega Man, Capcom, Resident Evil, Dead Aim. I bet this goes for $89. Coming out with the game knowledge, folks. You gotta respect it. Let's go ahead and look these up relative to these, because I have to be honest, some of these I don't actually know. I wanna say Streets of, my guess might have been Streets of Rage 2 or possibly Surgical Strike on the 32X Mega CD. This honestly looks more like a bootleg though, so not sure about that. This one, what in the world? Yeah, I'm almost, <laughs> that one's definitely a bootleg. Someone tells me Sega would not necessarily approve of Bloody Tears Sonic. <laughs> So folks, after much research and a little bit of head scratching, we found that pretty much almost everything on this table is actually like homebrew bootleg stuff. So like this one I found available on AliExpress for like 13 bucks. Uh, this one you said you couldn't even find, right? Couldn't find that one, couldn't find the 32X Surgical Strike. Uh, and then this one I definitely should have known. TMNT in Streets of Rage 2, like obviously that's not real. I think we I found a listing for this for like 30 bucks, which means Spanky, you look this one up, what were the results? 49.97. But sir, you have won this fair and square. Wow. My kid can have goldfish now. Now folks, while reproductions I know aren't allowed on whatnot, I'm not sure if homebrew stuff is. I'm pretty sure it is because I know John Riggs sells his like homebrewed games on there. All right, well Spanky, since you've done such a great job already, I'm gonna let you pick your next bin that you wanna go through. What's catching your eye from these top three? Good old Genesis. Ooh, he's going for the Genesis. I never played Genesis, so I'm totally cool with that. I think I'll uh, maybe go for this stuff. And as I'm kind of getting this sorted, do wanna say a big thank you to whatnot for sponsoring this. This video. The show where we're going to be selling almost all of this stuff is going to be happening this Wednesday, I believe the 24th at 7 o'clock Eastern. Oh, Dracula's Curse. That's a solid one to find. A ton of the stuff that we have sorted to go to whatnot is probably already listed in the buy it now. So if there's anything in this video that you're like, ooh, I kind of want that for my collection. You can use the link in the description, not only to check out everything that we have currently listed. Uh-oh, Span Spanky's breaking stuff over here. I'm sliding around. But you can also get $15 in free credit to spend on whatever you want if you haven't used the app yet. We are going to have our Mission Switch multi-game cases available again for just 15 bucks. So it's, if it's your first time using the app, you can pick up one of those for free. We're also going to try to make as much of the miscellaneous games $15, or at least in the $15 range as possible just for people to be able to maximize that $15 credit and feel like, you know, you can shop on any budget because we'll have some expensive stuff like this Panasonic Q, which is worth, you know, at least a few hundred bucks, but we'll also have some cheap stuff like the game made after Spencer's Real Father, Buy You Billy. See the resemblance? And as far as pricing goes, it's a matter of pride for me that every single thing that we list in our Buy It Now is five to 10% below hey, price charting value. Know. Unless of course we make a mistake on something, which frankly has never happened. Uh oh, Spanky just found a piece from his childhood over here. Destroy a 
Aikman. Look at that handsome young boy. It looks like a young John Cena. So Spanky just asked what we're going to do with all of these Sega games, like sell them individually or bundle. And the reality is like, it depends a lot on the dollar value. Like I know that, I don't know how you say that, Chakan is like a higher dollar game, even in loose condition. <laughs> idiot. But what we'll probably do is just take all of the Sega stuff and put it all into one like future auction and we'll have like bundles and singles because almost none of the Sega stuff will actually end up going on Amazon because it's just it's a little bit more obscure. Oh and it looks like at the bottom of this bin we've got some uh, Famicom games here. Dragon Ball. Nice. This is one thing I literally could not tell you a single Famicom game that holds value. I don't know if I'm going to try to like use Google Lens to look these all up in individually and see if there are any that have value or if honestly more likely I'll probably just put these guys in one large bundle and if there's something that's valuable then you know someone will just get a good deal. So folks just finished my bin sorting action here. We've got Famicom, Super Famicom and a ton of NES stuff. One question that I know I'll get when I talk about bundling stuff up and selling it that way is like why not just piece it out if you can make more money that way? Like why not just take the time and squeeze every dollar out of every single Famicom game that you can? And the reality is like, I, I practice what I preach. I buy from resellers a lot and I sell to resellers pretty often on whatnot as well. Just last auction, I think we sold like 40 Bakugan for like a buck or two a piece that I think someone will do really well with. The reality is when you run a business, you have to factor in what your time of best use is. Basically, what is the single most profitable activity that you can be doing at any given time and judge every other opportunity based on that. So like, I think one of the most profitable things I can do is go out and source Nintendo handhelds because on those units we'll make like 30 to sometimes a hundred dollars profit per unit and so it doesn't make sense when I can lot all of these up and sell them all at once and get them out of our office for me or even Spencer to take time to go and list every single unit even though maybe we could make five dollars profit a piece because the opportunity cost of that time is just too high so we'll have a couple solid bundles of uh, Super Famicom and Famicom games in the upcoming auction as a result of that but definitely let me know if you see any gems in here. I am curious if there's anything that uh, I'm going to really regret selling in a bundle. With something like this, I will sell it at auction. So hopefully if there's anything crazy in there, uh, the auction result will reflect that. But ultimately, you never really know. All right, Spanky, I think this bin may be calling your name next. That's a whole bunch of miscellaneous nonsense. This one is very exciting to me because DS prices have been skyrocketing. You guys ready for this? Watch this. Oh, come on. Well, folks, this bin ended up being very exciting indeed. Tons of DS and 3DS stuff. We've got PSP stuff over here, a few handhelds, which I just mentioned I really like. And it looks like Sean really favored the classic NES series for his complete uh, GBA collection. There's one sealed game in here, it looks like. Look at that $10 price tag on a sealed Metroid classic NES version. And it looks like the seal's really solid. Probably not the kind of thing I would really get graded, but definitely adds a lot of value. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I did not even realize this is crazy another sealed one this is the adventure of link i can't believe it's just loose with like no protector or anything okay i'd say let's take let's take the legend of zelda which is not sealed at all out of the protector and maybe swap those and look at the price tag on there a dollar 96 oh my gosh that's wild the other thing that's a little bit crazy is i don't know if i've ever bought a game gear collection that is this big looks like we've got a couple of manuals in here but this is dozens of games in this bag alone and there's two bags of of them. That's crazy. I've never known anyone to go that hard on the Game Gear, but good for you, Sean. Uh, Spanky, I think it's time for another challenge here real quick. $5. $5 this oh, time. Oh, I've never seen that much money. If you can point to a 50 plus dollar 3DS game. 50 plus? Shouldn't be too hard since so many of them are going up in price here. Kid Icarus Uprising with the big box. Ooh, it feels a little bit light. Is that even in there? Hey, that's... <laughs> don't penalize me. Okay, the game is in there. I don't know what else it's normally supposed to come with. Oh, AR cards. Spanky, it's missing the AR cards. What are you thinking? I'm just that. kidding. I'm just kidding. I honestly think even in this form, it's probably, probably 60 plus safely. Honestly, I would guess maybe over 100. So you have chosen wisely, sir.
That was the luckiest pick I've ever seen in my life. But in terms of highlights here, folks, just from memory here, just from the ones that I know I've flipped before, uh, Echo's not really, let's see, Heroes of Ruin, not sure. I know uh, Project X Zone, especially with the big box, is another probably $100 plus dollar title. Looks like we do have a sealed Kirby Triple Deluxe. It is the Nintendo Selects version, though. Ooh, we've got the lenticular cover for Cave Story 3D. Kind of cool to see. Uh, Chinatown Wars is, I think, like $40 plus dollars at this point, Orcs and Elves is actually a really uncommon one that I don't see complete very often. Let's see, we've got Guilty Gear here. Ooh, 999. Oh, it does have the manual as well. I, this is definitely over 50, maybe over 100, I can't remember. Glory of Heracles, I know, brings some decent money. Ooh, we've got New International Track and Field, which is sealed. I don't know. Don't know if I'd put a lot of stock in that one to be, you know, paying for my retirement. Ooh, Nano Stray 2. This one, I don't know if it has a lot of value, but this is one that I had on the DS growing up on my original cobalt blue one. This is definitely one that drove home the fact for me that I am really terrible at any form of shooter. Meanwhile, Spanky's been very busy over here. What what, what do we have over here on this lovely workbench? Uh, we have some poopy Xbox 360 games. Uh, over here we have a nice, beautiful, uh, light blue DSi. Um, and then we have a sealed Monster Hunter Rise Collector's Edition Amiibo. I have to imagine this will go for at least $200 on Amazon. Yeah, all right. If you're within 10 bucks on that, you get 10 bucks. Feels kind of flimsy, honestly. I don't love the cardboard on that. Okay, looks like 124 or 98 after fees. You weren't too far off. Then another thing that I noticed, what are these? Japanese something. Oh, PC? Are these all PC games? Super CD-ROM 2 system? Wait, Duo. PC? PC Engine CD-ROM 2. I feel like I should know what these are. Editor Riff, can you help me out on that? PC Engine Duo. It's pretty obvious what it is. Just like that Dracula X that was on the Super Nintendo earlier. Of course it was on the Super Nintendo. This video is not helping you out, Caleb. This video is not helping your game cred. Thanks, dude. I always knew you were smarter than everyone says. Folks, been doing some research. Turns out PC Engine games oftentimes can bring a solid pretty little penny there. So we'll definitely need to do a little bit more research on those guys. Also, who could forget the Atari Jaguar? A couple games complete in box, which is great to see, as well as a good number of loose ones over here too. Another console that I just very rarely end up buying for because it's just super uncommon. Then last but not least in this stack, we have some Turbo Graphics games. Boy, there is just all kinds of stuff in this lot that I just very rarely come across. So folks, at this point, we have done I think seven bins out of the 22. <laughs> we've got sorting bins that are now littered all over the office. I think we've got like six of them at this point and we have only made a dent. I feel like I've aged five years. This next one is really cool. I, honestly, they're, they're kind of all awesome so far, but this one we're starting to get into Saturn and 32X and Dreamcast stuff. And then right down here, we've got the Switch stuff, which we'll be able to contribute some of which to the trade shelf for Retropalooza the next week. And so folks, as I'm, oh geez, as I'm starting to unpack maybe the largest Sega bin, I'm gonna let you guys in since this is a little bit more of a leisurely video on that uh, little hater Hank and faceless Frank story that I hinted at earlier. Because just, I think two weeks ago, I beat maybe the most incredible game I've ever played, God of War Ragnarok. For some reason, it was my first experience with the God of War franchise. The only reason I started with it was because it came bundled with the PS5 that I got at Best Buy. And also I got some bad advice from my barber who said that you don't need to play any of the other God of War games, not even 2018. You don't need to do that. You'll get the context along the way. And I started playing the game and literally five minutes in, I was like, you know, I really wish I had played the 2018 one at least. I figured naively, man, this guy's giving me a great haircut. He's probably a smart dude. Last time I ever make that mistake, let me tell you. But anyways, I start playing this game and quickly realize not only, holy cow, this is where graphics are right now. I've been playing the Switch this whole time. It, <laughs> now, now I'll go back to it. It looks like a Game Boy. And also, holy cow, not only is this a highly sophisticated and satisfying hack and slash, but the story, oh, it gets me. So anyways, holy cow. I just spent like five minutes trying to think of a D joke and I could not come up with it. So anyway, I get done playing this absolute masterpiece of a game, which I think may be my favorite game of all time. I cried 
twice, I think, playing that. The graphics were amazing, the world was fantastic, just had an amazing experience, so I think to myself, I'm gonna go ahead and make a little YouTube community post about this wholesome experience with a little screenshot of the end of the game and say, oh my gosh, I may have a new favorite game. Not realizing that literally 90% of the comments were going to be, <laughs> probably the only game you've ever played. I bet he didn't even beat it. This is probably Photoshop. That's just recency bias. Phoenix Resale has a new favorite game like every month. And to all the hater Hanks and faceless Franks out there, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, there are, there are other channels out there. Like you, you don't, if you don't want, you don't have to stay on mine. You could just go, because I've realized recently that I don't really like uh, feeling sad. No, I, yeah, no, I definitely don't like it. <laughs> Let's see if we can find any gems right off the bat in this slot. Ooh, Sopranos, I think, might hold a little bit. I can't, don't quote me on that. Silent Hill Origins down here is, the, I want to say, maybe 40 plus dollars. I think Street Lancer Arena International. Uh, I'm going to have to look that one up. Family Guy is like 30 plus dollars. Run Like Hell, I want to say might be. I'll have to look that up too. Not Folks, what you may not realize, not only am I a fake gamer, I'm also a fake reseller. Okay, now that one's worth like 10 bucks. <laughs> okay, yeah, Sly is like a, you know, $30 game. Oh wow, looks like Origins is actually going for over 100. In this condition, maybe or maybe not, because looks like it was a rental copy at one point. But anyways, most of this stuff will end up going to Amazon, and I'm midway through sorting out all of this like Saturn and Dreamcast stuff over here. All right, folks, it's all organized now. A couple things to note from this table. One is that even low dollar Sega Saturn games can go for a decent bit, especially if you lot them up, because people look specifically for decent condition cases. So even if you've got you know like an NFL 97 don't completely write it off somebody might pay you know five to ten dollars for the case alone another thing that I noticed we have I don't know when this is from but we have a Sega Saturn game from two dudes gaming which is a game store that we see at conventions all the time I thought that was super funny 35 bucks for a loose copy of Clockwork Night 2 that'd be funny if it was worth like double at this point also found a single Super Nintendo game the Super 180 in one cartridge uh, definitely not going to be allowed to sell that one. We've got one Spider-Man 32X game. I think we're going to be seeing a lot more 32X going forward. We've got a ton of gems on the Dreamcast. I wasn't unfortunately able to lay all of these out and we have to get a little bit of a move on because it's been three hours and we're not close to halfway done. The only other thing that I wanted to mention was that uh, on these Sega Saturn imports, I happen to know that a lot of Saturn imports can do really well as opposed to like the average Famicom game is probably worth like five bucks or something. A lot of these Saturn ones though can be like 30 40 50 so this is an example of like when you have a resale business oftentimes the rules are kind of gray not black and white when you're thinking about how to best spend your time and this is a good example of making one call in one instance and another in a different instance we'll see if this actually ends up panning out once we do all of the research also folks speaking of my uh, personal insecurities how is my hairline looking I'm on meds for it at this point I, 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 I don't know how to feel all right folks I think it's high time that we we finally dig in to the Switch bin. Now there's a couple things that I'm looking for in games to add to the trade shelf. One is small, so these like collector's editions in here, right? Like this would not be a good trade shelf game because I want to be able to take everything on it to Retro Palooza this weekend and potentially trade either for like, if there's enough stuff, maybe like a Zelda Breath of the Wild Masters edition. Ugh, I don't think I want to know what that was. But I also want high dollar games. I think I'm just going to stick with like two, maybe three games in total. In fact, Spanky, why don't you help me out with this? If you pick a game that's worth more than $60, uh. then you get this bad boy right here because I have no more cash. Trials of Mana, we know that's a banger, especially if it's sealed. A lot of you guys probably bought that. Probably bought one of those. All right, new rule, you have 10 seconds. Ah, 10, not, oh, here we go. Oh, good choice there. You knew this one because we've listed this on no, whatnot recently, it's my, haven't it's you? It's my master trained See, eye. See, he's learning, folks. Say what you will about Spanky, and you do say please, plenty of mean please, things. Please say it all. Messenger on the Switch, and I want to say, I'm pretty sure this one might be Can sealed. I take it back? I do this one. <laughs> That's all right, you don't need the money anyway. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. It is sealed. Check that out, folks. Do you remember what we actually sold that for last time we had one? $150. And sure enough, folks, look at that. Mm. 
and so tasty. Where's my dollar? 160 bucks. You were right on the money with that one. You de you earned this one, dude. Congratulations. But for my purposes, folks, uh, looking for something that doesn't have like this outer cardboard, this one will just get listed pretty quickly. Ooh, something like Raiden V Director's Cut, perhaps? Maybe I should make this a challenge for myself as well that I'm not allowed to look, but I have to try to find the ones that are worth the most to get. Ooh, here's one. So Double Dragon 4. I want to say this is like in the 45 to like $60 range. Ooh, Double Dragon Neon from Limited Run. This one, original sticker is $50, but who knows how much it's worth now. Uh, got a bunch of like more standard stuff. It looks like nothing really to write home about there. Mario. Honestly, this Raiden is ooh, Dragon Marked for Death on the... I don't know if I've ever seen that game before. You guys let me know if this is like worth playing. The other thing I'm definitely going to be looking for at Retro Palooza, check out Carrie in there. I'm actually, I think I'm gonna... Uh, okay, maybe not. I'm waffling. I think Double Dragon Neon is definitely one that I'm gonna do. Got a couple of super... Ah, a couple of super rare games, Machinarium and Faerun. Is that how you say that? Ooh, East Origin is another limited run one that could have some value. The other grail that I'm definitely going to be looking for at Retropalooza is the Pokemon Edition Switch. I actually ended up really enjoying Scarlet and Violet, so that's one that I would love to have in the collection. The End is Nigh, I think, does actually have some value. All right, you know what I'm going to do, folks? After all of this carnage, I think I'm going to go for East Origin and Double Dragon Neon as my picks for the trade shelf. Let's see how I did. Okay, East Origin, not the best, I'll be honest. This is like a $30 game or so, so I definitely failed there. And Double Dragon Neon has somehow gone down in value since it was purchased for 50 bucks. Looks like, yeah, 49, 48, 34, 35. So honestly, not a ton of value going onto our trade shelf here, but this will at least get us a good amount of the way towards one one of our items that is still on the grail board here. Shelter Generations, Pokemon Switch. I'm very skeptical that we'll be able to find either a kiosk or the Zeldathon Switch, but you never know. But folks, it looks like definitely the highest dollar gem in this bin is the still sealed Castlevania Anniversary Collection Collector's Edition. This thing is hefty too. This probably weighs five or six pounds and goes for around 200 bucks before shipping on eBay. So that's definitely a gem. We've got Metroid Dread Collector's Edition as well. I want to say I maybe picked up one of these on release day. Initially, I think these were flipping for like 150 or something, but I just kept mine. I'm curious what it's going for now. Yeah, it looks like at this point the value's actually come down a little bit. 80 to 100 bucks on that. And then the last huge special edition in here is the TMNT Cowabunga Collection. Looks like this one also comes with some trading cards and like some sort of a little standy display, which is kind of cool to see. Now, folks, what we've been doing with all this Sega stuff, this is more Sega stuff than I've literally ever bought before. Um, looks like this bin is primarily... A lot of 32X. Well, actually, it's a good mix. We've got Saturn in here. We've got Genesis. Um, what we've been doing with it all, as you can see from this one here, is we've just been making Sega bins. Because what I'm realizing is we can't, in the future, like, just have one big Sega auction in the future. We'll probably have to have one, like, just dedicated to Dreamcast. And another one maybe for 32X. So this bin, I am trying to see down in here. By the way, here's some of the stuff that I'm looking at. We've got NBA Jam, Sega CD. D stuff, that's super cool. Viking Commander, Brutal Paws of Fury. What I'm realizing is if this is pretty much all Sega stuff, I think we're just going to mark this one also as Sega. Oh, come on, the sticker's in the way. All right, hold on, thank you. You gotta get in close here for some sticker peel ASMR. Are you guys ready? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> this is what? Is this number three or four Sega bin? <laughs> is wild. Who wrote it better, folks? Put your votes in the comments. The fake gamer or the faker gamer? All right, this honestly looks like way too much work. I think I'm just gonna. Uh, <laughs> Two nasty stuff. <socks. laughs> And he couldn't even find them on price charting. Well, folks, if you thought that the items that we've come up with so far were obscure, uh, I have just the table to introduce you to. This is basically, the top row is all Switch stuff, a lot of it's sealed. And then the rest is almost all random bootleg and really obscure stuff. We're talking 8-bit Christmas 2014. Couldn't tell you what that is. We've got Sweet Home. Is that an actual... 
I actually don't know if that one might be authentic. My friend, that is actually a Famicom game developed by Capcom, really good game, which made its way over to the American cart style in one way or another. We've got Resident Evil on the Game Boy Color. This, what is this? This is a clear NES cartridge that says KSS 084 Rev 8. We've got Mega Man on the Sega Master System, a sealed Gourmet Warriors on the Super Nintendo, Sonic Mega Mix on the CD, Little Medusa, whatever that is, X-Men versus Street Fighter on the Super Nintendo. And this one actually has the Etsy URL on the back, no less. 40 Winks on the N64. And our favorite part, the RGT85 t-shirt. Like and subscribe, folks. We'll I wonder if this was also as worn as the socks were. This was his personal one. Complete also with the matching Super Nintendo hat and RGT's uh, head crusties. <laughs> one of the most interesting items from this table actually is this set of GameCube component cables. Now, unfortunately, these aren't official or they'd be worth over $200, but it looks like even unofficial ones are going for like 55 bucks brand new on uh, eBay. So this next box was actually very interesting. Could you shh? LC. This next box was all like completely random box stuff. We've got a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. We've got a Legend of Zelda chess set, which I don't know if you recognize this, Spanky. I've actually thought oh, about buying in this. in E-Town. Yes, in E-Town. Look at these. I, I, I'm actually excited to take some of these out. The quality, folks. Ooh, that is nice. Nerd alert! You cannot, you, you can't buy stuff. Well, you can actually, you can maybe buy one for me depending <laughs> if I sell this thing. Honestly though, this might be one of those that I keep because, oh, it's Daruk! Or should I say Daruk? Yeah, I think this is probably honestly going to be a collection piece. Sorry, not sorry. But also look at this, I rarely see this. Look at all these still complete in box, uh, satisfy grips. I wonder if they sent him like a little care package at some point. I love, not sponsored. By the way, satisfy, if you're watching this, like, Hit me up, I love your stuff. I never play my Switch in handheld mode without a grip. It's just, it's so uncomfortable. Cool that we'll be able to sell some of these uh, in our next show, probably our next show, or maybe we'll hold off on these until we do a dedicated Switch stream. But yeah, absolutely fantastic product if you guys uh, haven't heard of it. Got four of those and a complete in box Sega Saturn. Again, I don't think I've ever flipped one of these complete before. I've flipped plenty of like console units. Then we have a one fourth scale actual Pac-Man arcade machine, which I thought was super cool. I don't know how comfortable that would be to play like with the tiny joystick and stuff. Also, I don't have any one fourth size quarters to put in it. Huh, would you look at that? It's time to take my hair loss meds. <laughs> Seriously though, Sean, thanks for the random Casio that you threw in with this lot. Also, check this out. Literally the coolest Wii I have ever seen. Uh-oh, looks like this uh, little memory card flat. Actually, both of these are taped on here, which isn't a great sign. Oh, oh, just kidding, they actually work. Okay, honestly, this is this is gonna be my personal Wii for sure. And that's the last time you will hear me talk about my personal Wii on this channel. <laughs> Other than that, with box number 17 or 18, it was a whole bunch of miscellaneous like cords and stuff. Oh, and speaking of grips, we got a fixture grip. This thing actually attaches to uh, It passed. <laughs> Actually attaches to your pro controller and uh, I like these as well. Got another looks like retro bit bootleg here. And look at this, Street Fighter Origins Akuma. This thing is brand new sealed. Ooh, and a Super 64 Eon. Some people absolutely swear by these upscalers. Oh, hold up. Hold the phone, folks. You know what I just realized looking into the soul of this Wii here? There's a mystery game. So you guys know what we have to do. We gotta come over here to the testing station, unplug our tester Wii, figure out what this bad boy is. Editor Riff, can I get a drum roll, please? Is this video still going? Oh, we do have a power light. Here we go. Oops. Ooh, why hello. Here it comes. What do you guys think? What do you think, Spanky? What's it gonna be? Uh, Three, two, one. Ooh, Scarface, the world is yours. Good choice, Sean. Well played. Now, folks, I want to say that we're coming into the home stretch here. In reality, we've got at least four more large bins, but these two, there's not a whole lot really to speak of. Well, except, of course, this PC Engine IFU 30 system, which plays both PC Engine games and the C I don't know how to say this, the CD-ROM 2 games that we were talking about earlier. In reality, am I going to know really how to test this? thing? Probably not. 
Nope, definitely not. So in reality, these are probably going to get sold as untested. Again, it's kind of like a time thing, but someone will get a solid deal on them. We've, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we've got the Link Foam Sword that was on clearance for 11 bucks. Ooh, a Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller. For some reason, these are super popular. Why anyone wa would want to unnecessarily go back to this form factor is beyond me. Ooh, we've got the uh, Sega Sports Dreamcast controller. That's a little bit of a rare gem. Ooh, and the Genesis CD X. I don't know if I knew that this was in this lot. That, is the eject gonna work? There it is, what's the game? Ooh, Star Wars Rebel Assault in there. Very nice, beautiful disc too. Oh, and who could forget an Atari Jaguar, just casually in the bottom of this black toad here. Oh, and more laundry. And folks, grip, come on. As I'm going through all this stuff, I'm very aware that if a deal like this had come along like four years ago when I had started this business or even like three years ago after I'd been doing it for a while, there's no chance I would have been able to take advantage of it because this business some of you guys know was started with 500 bucks of birthday and Christmas money that I'd saved up out of a uh, studio apartment. So it's kind of surreal that I spent the cost of like a decent car on this collection and now we have this like really nice half basement to work out of the, you know, it's like it's like an actual business. Don't wanna get too mushy about it or anything, but I'm also very aware that it's because of you guys not only watching the videos, but also buying a lot of this stuff from us on whatnot that like this whole thing, all of Phoenix resale is actually possible. So I don't know, I've just been thinking a lot today about about what a just what a lucky fortunate life this is to live and I appreciate you guys for supporting me in it personal week. Looks like in this bin we've got primarily I haven't seen anything that's not Nintendo which I love to see because almost all of this stuff will just be super easy like all of these games that um, you know are above 10 bucks or so in value and that have barcodes and that are in nice shape like everything that you see here could be sorted and listed and sent off to Amazon very easily within an afternoon probably a few hours so that kind of a Efficiency is always really nice, especially... Elsie, stop. Okay, she needs to come down. <laughs> Look at her going. <laughs> Don't knock this stuff, this is valuable. I paid more for this than I did for you. So these, like, especially if not a lot of these need to be resurfaced and we will, let's actually go ahead and check a couple of these and see. Uh, this one's kind of on the fence. I think that's probably fine. GameCube games are honestly pretty hardy. Oh no, look at the top scratch on that thing. That is brutal. I don't know if it was like a resurfacer that did that to that disc, but on a lot of these games, a lot of people don't know the data is stored on the underside of the top of the disc. So this can actually be really detrimental. We'll have to test that one out for sure. A lot of people ask if we test all of our games and the answer is no, but we do inspect everything. And if it looks suspect like this, we'll definitely run it through the resurfacer uh, and make sure that it looks good and not suspect on the way out the door. Yeah, it looks like it looks like there may have been some sort of like suspect buffing action going on with some of these games since there's so many like kind of circular patterns on these discs. But nonetheless, it's always fantastic to get a lot of a bunch of GameCube games in at once because these things just fly off the shelves. All right, folks, our final three bins. Spanky's working on some more laundry over there. Honestly, this kind of looks like a lot of work, so I think I'm just gonna... Oh, wow, it worked. So folks, our final three bins are down, and this might be the most random assortment of stuff that we've found yet. We've got this uh, Game Boy Pocket Lite, a collector's edition of R-Type 3 and Super R-Type. This awesome Virtua Cop 2 bundle here, complete in box. A Sharp Twin Famicom, I just looked this up. This is like 250, 270 in the box. This I didn't even see somehow. The NES Limited Edition Game Boy SP, which let's see. Ooh, is in really nice shape too. Love to see that. We have a Virtual Boy controller here, even though I'm almost sure we don't, we didn't get a Virtual Boy headset in this. The Sonic Mania Collector's Edition. I have no idea why this box is so massive. Oh, it looks like there's actually a 12 inch statue of Sonic standing on a gen. Okay, that's actually pretty sick. We've got more bootleg stuff over here. A very expensive Fire Emblem Amiibo set, if I'm remembering correctly. A Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild earplug set and case 
case, this is the kind of obscure thing that I wouldn't be surprised it's worth a lot of money in like 10 years. Some more collector's edition stuff here. And then last but not least, we have this little box of randomness, including a uh, Ghosts and Goblins custom controller, some random <laughs> comic books here, a Sega IR 7000 communicator, huh? And my personal favorite, an old family photo of RGT85 and his dog. Sean, man, I think you need to bring this look back. This is pretty dashing. And who could forget the disassemblable Sega Tower of Power statue set. I've never seen one of these, thought that was awesome. Folks, if you wanna see my live reaction and thought process as I was buying this entire lot, go ahead and check out this video where I bought it from RGT85 right down here. And I will catch you guys on the flip.